Biblically Centered Kids. Howdy, partners. Okay, what'd y'all think about that? Yeah, I don't think that really worked. <laughs> well, happy Friday to you kiddos listening today. Today is June 21st, 2024, and I am your host for today's episode, Mr. Johnny. And like I said before, happy, happy Friday. Are you guys gearing up for a fantastic weekend? Well, like I said, today is June 21st, and if you didn't know, today is World Music Day. Most of us have an innate or deep understanding of music, even if you can't play an instrument or even sing. Somehow we can connect deeply with rhythms and melodies. Even plants understand music. That's right, plants. Did you know that they have done music experiments with plants? And they discovered that plants will actually tend to grow faster after a generous helping of classical music. It's true. Music has the ability to connect with us on a deeper level. World Music Day, or Fête de la Musique, celebrated each June 21st, was started in France. But today it highlights music's universal appeal. It's meant to make music more available and encourage people of varying skill levels to interact a lot more with all types of tunes. So what is your favorite type of music? Who are some of your favorite singers, bands, or artists? We listen to a lot of worship music in our house, but I also like a lot of music with rock and roll influences. One of the great things about being human and being made in the likeness of God is that we have something called creative faculties. We have the ability to create and use our creative and God-given ingenuity to create all sorts of things. And to me, there's nothing quite as impactful as a creative song with heart-touching lyrics that can help set our minds on things above. So even if you don't have the desire to be a musician, know this, God has put creativity inside of you to create something in this world that points people to Him. It's an amazing gift that we all have, yes, even you. But enjoy this World Music Day today and find some time to listen and share some of your favorite music. All right. Well, it's Friday, so what does that mean? It's time to move on to our quiz for the week. Are you ready for another quiz Quiz day day Friday? Friday. I'm going to be asking a series of multiple choice questions. Some easy, maybe a few more difficult, but all requires us to listen well. Are you ready to listen and to answer? Go ahead and get your thinking caps on. I'm putting mine on right now. All right, here we go with question number one. This week, we talked all about virtue why. What does virtue why say? A, yummy food in my tummy all the time. B, We yield our bodies to physical training and healthy habits. C. We yield our minds to the things above each morning. Hmm. Well, if you've been listening this week, I bet this one was probably an easy one. Because of course it's B. We yield our bodies to physical training and healthy habits. Question two. If you can remember all the way back to Monday, we mentioned a verse in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 to be exact. In this verse, it says, do you not know that your bodies are blanks of the blank? Hmm, what two words fill in those blanks? Do you not know that your bodies are A, houses of the most high? B, do you not know that your bodies are steeples on a church? C, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? So is it A, houses of the Most High, B, steeples on a church, 
or C, Temples of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, this one might have been a little easy too, right? Because it's C, Temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This verse tells us that our bodies are like temples. A temple was a special place where people went to worship God. So if our bodies are temples, that means they're very special and we should treat them with great care and respect. All right, question three. In our Old Testament story this week, we learned about Samson and his mother and the importance of following the instructions we receive from God. And Samson was a very strong man because of his diligence in following God's instructions. But in the story, what did Delilah have done to Samson that made him weak? Was it A, she had his hair shaved? B, she had his mouth... That was B, she had his mouth glued shut. See what I did there? Or C, she had his hands tied together. So was it A, she had his hair shaved? B, she had his mouth glued shut. Or C, she had his hands tied together. That's right, it's A. She had his hair shaved. Delilah had the Philistines come while he was sleeping and shave his head, which weakened him. And they also took him to prison. But in prison, Samson prayed to God to return his strength. And God did just that. And Samson was able to destroy the Philistines. All right, question four. In our New Testament episode this week, we talk a lot about Paul and how he communicated the importance of living in a way that honors God. Paul used an example of runners and that we should run in a way that what? That we should run in a way so that A, we obtain the prize, B, we get a participation trophy, or C, so we can say we just gave it a shot. So what do y'all think? Is it A, so that we can obtain the prize, B, so that we can get a participation trophy, or C, so that we can say we just gave it a shot? Well, if Paul is comparing living this life to following Jesus, do you think we should give it all we have and run the race as if we're wanting to win? Of course! So the answer is A, we obtain the prize. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, which means like a perishable prize, something that's not going to last forever. But what we're racing for is something that does last forever. So we shouldn't run aimlessly, meaning without direction, but we should discipline our bodies to keep it under control so that after we tell people about Jesus, we won't be disqualified. This means we have to treat our bodies with respect. So that can mean eating healthy foods, exercising, and avoiding those things that can harm us. When we take care of our bodies, we are actually honoring God. All right, last question, question five. This week, as you know, we've been talking a lot about healthy habits. So what is something we can do to have a healthy lifestyle, both physically and spiritually? Is it A, eating fruits and vegetables daily? B, exercising daily? C, spending time reading the Bible and praying daily? Or D, showing God's love and kindness to those around us? Yeah, I know, you figured this one out pretty quick, right? Because of course it's all of them. These are all great things that we can do each and every day to maintain a healthy, God-honoring life, both physically and spiritually. Well, that was all for the quiz today. How'd you do? I hope you enjoyed the quiz today on this beautiful Friday, and I hope that you are gearing up for a great weekend. And remember, God has given us everything we need to live a life that points others to Jesus. And of course, we always thank you for listening to this week's episode so far. Be sure to listen each day to the Biblically Centered Kids podcast 
and tune in tomorrow for a fun game day episode with Miss Danica. And then I'll be back on Sunday to lead you in a draw along. Until next time. Thank you.